Hi to all, and thank you for taking some time to take a look at this recording. I recorded this after the live event of the Project Propel kickoff webinar. So this should only take about um, 20 minutes as opposed to the hour-long live presentation. Uh, my name is Amy Holmes, and I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator for Beacon. Beacon started in 2009. I just have a little bit more information here about what we do. The legislature created us in order to address the behavioral health workforce shortage across Nebraska. And so we work with the entire spectrum of the behavioral health workforce, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, psychiatric nurse practitioners, therapists, bachelor's level professionals, peer support professionals, and direct support professionals that may have a high school diploma or lower. Um, I, too, um, am a person that has some behavioral health experience. Uh, I worked for the Integrated Care Coordination Unit in Region 6 uh, in Douglas County. That's where I started out my career. Moved on to uh, law school and pursued a career in policy as it relates to behavioral health and other at-risk populations. Worked for Senator McGill at the Nebraska Legislature. She is a former Nebraska Lincoln Senator. And then I came to work for Beacon in December of 2013. I am a person with lived experience as an individual, a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, a cousin, a niece, and I have worked with um, adult peer support professionals, uh, youth peer support professionals, and family peer support professionals um, in various capacities in Nebraska. Very glad to be a part of this uh, project and have the opportunity to focus on peer support services overall. The purpose of the webinar was to provide information about the project in general and get some more information from the participants that were on the live webinar. And then talk about next steps. We did leave time for question and answers at the end of the webinar, and I won't take time to do that on this recording, but hopefully we will be distributing some of the questions and answers and I'll open those up for further comment uh, via some kind of electronic medium here relatively soon. This is just the mechanism that folks could submit questions during the webinar electronically. This is a geographic distribution of those that were on the webinar call. You can see there's a large concentration here of people in Lincoln and Omaha. And not too many in the outlying areas. And that definitely tells me, and I'm sure it's not a surprise to anyone, that a lot of our focus needs to be getting additional peer support professionals in those rural areas and uh, to be sure that they're linked into the things that are going on in Lincoln and Omaha. Project Propel itself is a statewide workforce development plan. It's much like the plans that um, Beacon develops for all of the behavioral health professions that we support. Uh, we would like to have more paid positions um, and we do that for all of those in the spectrum of the workforce because, as you may or may not know, Nebraska is a federal and state shortage area, um, and we simply don't have enough folks to go around. Um, as it relates to peer support in general, it seems that we don't have enough positions either. Uh, the need is there. We believe that certainly the position should be there in order to serve uh, those in need most effectively, um, but it doesn't appear that, that they are there. So more paid positions, more paid professionals is part of our goal. We want to work towards financial sustainability, and that's, again, something that we work on with all behavioral health professions. Organization is um, always key in any workforce development plan. We really try to emphasize self-care uh, with all professionals that we work with. We know that caregivers, especially behavioral health care uh, caregivers, don't do such a great job of managing their own stress and taking care of themselves when it comes to compassion fatigue and vicarious trauma. So that's something we hear at Beacon um, 
always emphasize. And we're going to talk too about um, the importance of coming together and creating common goals among those that will be working with us on Project Propel. Mm. Um, we will be focusing on not only adult peer support, but youth peer support and family peer support also. And we think that it is totally possible and probable for those um, three different types of the profession to come together and create common goals that can help um, move the entire peer support workforce forward in Nebraska and create new opportunities. I can give a short example about um, licensed mental health practitioners that we've worked with over the past year. Those folks are divided into three categories, uh, professional counselors, social workers, and marriage and family therapists, but they all receive the same state license, the LMHP, or the Licensed Mental Health Practitioner. Historically speaking, they have not worked together. Those three groups have been in separate camps, working on separate agendas, and when they would approach the legislature or another um, policy-making body like Medicaid, they would uh, often be divided amongst themselves, um, talking about separate goals, um, maybe criticizing the goals of another um, part of this particular discipline. And it often just didn't work very well. Um, policymakers um, really would rather see a united front with a large group of individuals that share common interests rather than have to try to sort through um, a bunch of folks that are, are fractured among themselves with different goals and different agendas. So I think that gives us a good idea of what this work with Project Propel may be like. Um, we have had some good success with bringing people together who have um, shared vision perhaps, but maybe different professional goals, different personal goals, um, at least come together for the purposes of policy development and create a common agenda. We can talk a little bit more about how this project might work. Um, First and foremost, Project Propel is about collecting, lifting, bolstering, amplifying, organizing, recognizing, and respecting the peer voice. And the peer voice will be the loudest in this planning process. As we work forward with these goals that Beacon has outlined here, the action steps, as you can say, represented by these arrows, are where the real collaboration and work is going to happen. Definitely here, with the project itself, the peer voice will be the loudest voice. And Beacon will not abandon that particular concept because it is at the core of any successful workforce development plan that will happen in Nebraska. But there will be other players. There will be the government, the Department of Behavioral Health. There will be um, large provider organizations. There will be uh, other peer organizations that are already providing services. There will be organizations that are interested in providing peer services. We hope that all those folks will come together to work on this project together and work towards these goals that we've outlined. Now exactly what steps are going to get us to each goal is to be determined. And that's to be determined by all of us collaboratively. So a lot of work is yet to be done. As people registered, they listed a lot of great questions <coughs> Excuse me, that they hoped to get answered during the webinar. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I won't be able or wasn't able to answer all of their questions, but it sure did provide a great framework for us moving forward with Project Propel. And these are all the questions that Beacon wants to help the peer support community answer. These are the big ones. And we want to be sure we stay focused on these. Towards the end of the call, uh, it seemed that it may be a good idea to create some kind of online forum for question and answers. So we'll see how that works. Uh, but maybe at this point, we'll develop a FAQ document that can be circulated about Project Propel itself. 
And then as we move forward with the planning process, we can begin to get at some of these larger questions. I really think it's just a great way for us to, to structure our discussion. We talked about what motivates uh, Beacon, and I know what motivates all of you that are watching this recording. Even though we may have differences of opinion and the best way to approach policy or the best way to approach our practice, those that are in need are the reason we do this work in the first place. You can see here that we've done a really incredible job reducing the numbers of AIDS-related deaths, deaths related to leukemia, but unfortunately our death rate related to suicide has remained pretty much constant, and this goes all the way back to 1965. If we're going to reduce the rate of suicide, if we're going to make a difference in this sort of problem, peer support professionals will play a critical role in that plan, and we'll have to do something different. What we've been doing hasn't been working. And I think that whatever we do that's different will have a lot to do with intervention from those with lived experience, an intervention that finds people where they're at rather than relying on those people to get to the professionals. We asked a poll question um, about whether there were enough jobs for peer support professionals in folks' area of the state. The answer varied um, depending on area of the state. Um, in the North Polk area, for instance, or excuse me, the North Platte area, for instance, there were those that were looking for jobs, um, or excuse me, those were, there were those that are looking for peer uh, professionals to put into positions that were open, but there simply weren't enough uh, peer support professionals to fill those positions. Now, in other areas of the state, there was the opposite. Um, there were folks that were trained up, but there were no jobs available. This provides a little bit more information about why Beacon is interested in peer support. Now, it is our uh, job under the law, and if you review that statute 71830, um, you'll see that we are required by law to support peer professionals in addition to all of the other <clears throat> behavioral health professionals that we are to support. So really, it's our job. Um, but also, we know that, as I've mentioned, peer-based interventions have to be a part of any plan um, that is to comprehensively address the behavioral health needs of the people in our state. And we know that unequivocally. This link here um, to this LR-592 document provides a good overview of some of the work that Beacon is currently doing or most recently doing with different behavioral health professionals in the state. So that's there for your reference if you want to take a look at it. Here are some good uh, references for national peer support movements, especially as we move into a reformed healthcare environment, what role will peer support play in, um, in the Affordable Care Act as we move towards more outcome-based purchasing, value-based purchasing? All really interesting articles here. This is a great link um, for SAMHSA and their particular resources that they have available. And then I've also uh, linked to Peers for Progress, which I think is a great website for your reference. The next question that we asked were, um, when we work on things like peer support credentialing, training, or supervision, what are the things that concern us most? And a lot of these things came up. Um, and there were a lot of concerns that um, the the peer model would be compromised, that um, we would not be able to grow the workforce without um, becoming, uh, having peers become more clinical or having them become case managers, which is, of course, contrary to what we all want and would really defeat the purpose of, of having peer support professionals in more positions across the state. 
So it's a very valid concern and something that we need to keep in mind. I did say, however, that there are a lot of people across the state that are doing this work and staying true to the model. And so the old, adi the old adage uh, is appropriate here that those who say it cannot be done should not interrupt the person doing it. I think a lot of great work is already happening and we can build on it. We asked another question about the best things um, about peer support when we did the registration process. And I think these are the things that show us um, why we keep going, right? It is growing. Of course it makes a difference. And I have witnessed all of the wonderful things that can happen when this work is integrated into the medical model and really used in a way um, that is true to the peer support model. Incredible things happen. There are new programs being created. And I think our, uh, there are an increasing number of people that understand more about peer support, or at least are interested in peer support. I encourage the, the participants to keep in mind that um, even though everyone across the state may not have um, bought into the idea of this as a valuable service and, and a worthwhile thing to take on as an organization, it doesn't mean that it won't happen. And I've seen um, groups of people in the community create change so many times that I have no doubt that the same thing can happen here. That's a lot of work. It takes um, some thick skin and the ability to take a lot of rejection. But what I've seen already happen in Nebraska with peer support is really due to the efforts of small groups of individuals that have convinced um, others that this is worthwhile and that it should be taken on. I asked the group to talk about some next steps um, after we finished the webinar and overwhelmingly the response was that we should go ahead and start doing some planning meetings. So that's something that I will follow up with everyone on via email. Um, I asked that um, those that were on the webinar fill out the evaluation and I think that you'll have an opportunity to do that after you for, uh, view this recorded version. Uh, if you do that, you should have an opportunity to indicate which area of this project is of most interest to you. If you can't, um, if that isn't made available to you, just shoot me an email and, and let me know which things you might be most interested in working on, whether it's um, uh, the financial sustainability area, credentialing, if you're interested in the self-care piece, um, any of the, the goals that we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, or if there are other things that you think are important that should be focused specifically on in this process. I'll be um, sending out announcements via email to those that registered for um, the webinar and others that are on various contact lists, but please spread the word and have people get in contact with me if they would like to um, get on an email list so they can stay updated on Project Propel. We did leave some time for question and answer um, and there were participants that submitted questions electronically throughout the broadcast so I answered those um, at the end of the webinar. Um, if you have questions that you'd like to submit after you've heard more about this just uh, shoot me an email here and I'd be happy to talk with you anytime. And until we talk next, I appreciate your interest and your attention, and I hope that you have a good day. Thank you.